This is the Insta360 Air. It's a 360 degree camera that I've been playing around with for a couple of weeks now. But instead of giving this particular camera a full in-depth review, I, as a curious content creator, wanted to figure out when 360 degree cameras make sense and when they don't. I'm Martin from TechAltar. You're watching the 16th episode of the Story Behind series and let's find out. All right, so 360 degree cameras come in all sizes and shapes and especially all price points. The Air that I have here is probably the smallest and most affordable option that you should want to consider. It comes in at around 150 USD and what makes this special is that you can just plug it into any Android phone and start shooting away. No pairing, no wireless connections, nothing. This is a plug and play solution for beginners that essentially just wants you to take 360 degree selfies and videos. A step up from this would be standalone 360 degree cameras like the Samsung Gear 360 or the Insta 360 4K which are more expensive but give you better image quality and more flexibility to place the camera wherever you want instead of just having it on your phone. And finally you get high-end models for serious filmmakers for tens of thousands of dollars like the Insta 360 8K, some custom GoPro rigs and the Nokia Ozo. Yeah that one costs like 45,000 USD after a huge discount so it's it's not exactly in my price range. And while image quality significantly differs between these devices, the general concept of 360 degree cameras doesn't. The fundamental change as compared to regular cameras is that the cameraman doesn't have to and can't direct your attention. And this lack of focus is exactly the strength and weakness of 360 degree cameras. I think they are pretty much unsuitable for videos that want to tell stories or teach or explain something specific because for those you need a guide, you need to pay close attention to what matters. I mean, I'm not shooting this in 360 degrees because you looking out of the window or up on the ceiling would only serve to take your attention away from what I'm trying to say. And I'm pretty sure that people directing complex story driven movies would kind of feel the same. But these cameras are great if you want to show someone a place or you want to deliver an experience. Anything where you'd want to make people feel like they're there with you and they're part of what you're showing. I went to Barcelona for MWC not long ago and I made this video walking around the halls of the exhibition to let people who've never been there see and get a feeling of what it's like. In the same way, 360 degree vacation photos make sense too because you basically want to capture this awesome place that you're in. Taking 360 videos of events like a concert, for example, also make your audience feel like they're part of the action. And imagine the situation that you want to sell your apartment. A 360 degree photo will totally work to show your audience what your place really feels like. Notice there's no story in either of these and the whole point is just to let your viewers look around and find what interests them. See, when I got my Insta360, I kind of had to figure out when it makes sense to use it because I was conditioned to think of cameras in a certain way. I, until now, like to take photos where I could frame the shot. What makes these photos work is that I select exactly what's in the shot and what isn't, which part of the image is in the center, which one is on the side, and so on. But with 360 degree cameras being so new, I don't think we've really figured out yet what really makes a shot stand out. I've noticed that shots usually work well when I have things really close to the camera from all sides, like way, way closer than what I would feel comfortable with on a regular camera. Other than that though, I still feel like I'm just taking shots and hoping hoping that they'll turn out to be interesting. So maybe we will just need to relearn how we use cameras all over again. So do I think 360 degree cameras will be the future? No, but I think they'll be an exciting part of it because they'll be able to deliver a whole new type of experience. At the same time, the option for a filmmaker to carefully direct your attention at exactly the thing that matters the most will remain just as important as it is now. So given that 360 works best for immersion and for delivering an experience, I think the concept of the Insta360 Air and its iPhone version, the Nano, is pretty perfect. They are inherently handheld, so you instinctively want to capture yourself and your friends in cool places. And Insta360 has an exclusive deal with Twitter to let you use the Nano for 360 degree live streaming straight to Periscope. 
makes a ton of sense. Now, there are a few limitations to the experience. First, sharing your work can be a bit of a pain. Editing 360 photos and videos is both quite clumsy, and then your social media choices are quite limited too. Instagram supports neither 360 photos nor videos, so you're stuck with this version called Tiny Planet. Twitter supports only videos, but not photos. Facebook supports both, but sharing from the Insta360 app only works to personal profiles, not business pages like my Tech Altar page. YouTube supports videos on all devices, but most messaging services don't support direct sharing at all. So in a nutshell, your sharing options are a lot more limited than with regular images. By the way, shameless plug, you should totally follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook because I upload a ton of cool stuff on each. Another limitation is image quality because you're stretching a regular file and users are only looking at a small portion of it. This means that even super high resolution content, which by the way takes ages to upload, will appear quite pixelated. I'm sure technology will fix this in a couple of years, and I think it's not fair to expect movie quality shots from something as affordable as the Air, but at the time when even smartphones have spoiled us with super crispy images, this will most definitely feel a little rough. Even so, even my cheap little Air is kind of good enough for sharing a quick photo or video to Facebook as long as you take it in good light, because it does struggle in the dark, and especially if you don't expect to view it on a large screen. So to sum it up, 360 degree cameras are cool toys. Now for most people, I think it will make more sense to buy one in a couple of years from now, when I'm sure they will get a much needed boost in image quality even for the entry level models, as well as better social media support for sharing. But if you just can't wait to get your hands on one, then hey, these cameras are already kind of cool enough for casual use. I would like to thank Insta360 for sending me the air for testing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button below. Follow me on the socials. I'm Tech Altar pretty much everywhere. And if you want to see past episodes from the store behind series, they're somewhere here. Future episodes will come straight into your inbox if you hit the subscribe button. And you'll even get notifications if you hit the bell button next to the subscribe button. The coolest thing ever. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.